Doug DeGraffin read, and I'm live this morning. And the announcements are printed for you in the bulletin, and we welcome you to this service of worship. There are um, prayer booklets um, in all sorts of places around here. The, uh, they've been put together as a resource for you during this uh, month of sermons on prayer, and uh, we have devotionals that have been written, uh, a great number of which by church members. So pick one up this morning as um, you exit the worship space. The rest of the announcements, seriously, they're right there on the back, and uh, you pay attention to those that uh, bring meaning and joy to your life. I will tell you that the last Sunday of the month is Weekend of the Cross, that we are going to do one worship service on Weekend of the Cross at 10 o'clock in the Trinity Center. So we've got churches coming in and, and we've got all these youth groups here, and uh, we just want to cross-pollinate and see each other and worship together. So that'll be the last Sunday in the month of July. Let us pray. Almighty God, you desire that in every place people should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. Let our observance of communion be a faithful reflection of our peace-seeking and our striving toward oneness with one another and with you. Help us in this hour of worship to bury ancient quarrels to be purged of all envy or resentment, and to reach some concrete resolve toward becoming more useful, more resourceful members of our Lord's body, of His holy church. We pray in the name of Him who keeps praying that they may all be one, so that the world may believe, even the name of Jesus. Amen. For our hymn of praise, would you stand? Please be seated. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins, and seek to live in peace with one another. 
Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another, praying. We have failed as your church, O God. You call us to live faithfully, act justly, and bring peace to the earth. Instead, our lives and your church reflect more of our needs and worries and less of the needs and worries of all peoples. Move us beyond ourselves to hear the cry of the world and to respond with acts and deeds of kindness, mercy, and justice. May your grace shine through a church that even with its shortcomings accepts the call of Christ to serve and care and love and bring peace. May we feel your forgiving spirit now. Amen. Let us in silence make our individual confession to Almighty God. Jesus spoke words that no matter how many times we hear them have more meaning than we can fully grasp. This is my body broken for you and my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Let us receive all that Christ offers to us and be thankful. Amen. Would you pray with me? Most holy God, we praise you for creating the world we know and for placing us on just the right planet, revolving around just the right warming, life-giving star. We thank you for stamping your image upon us, for endowing us with minds to ponder your will and hearts that are restless until they find rest in loving obedience to you. We give you thanks for providing for all our real needs, material and spiritual, and above all, for granting us and your divine Son a model of a life lived for you and for you and a friend that sticks closer than a brother for our creation, preservation, and salvation. We are thankful to you, O God, far beyond the power of words. Around this table spread the mementos of your presence with the disciples and of his continuing presence with us. We have gathered to recall and to celebrate his life. We remember his humble birth, his youthful wisdom, his loyalty to his family, his devotion to his disciples, his compassion for all of them, even Judas. We remember the brilliance of his teachings, the calm and crisis, his generosity toward his enemies. We remember the sorrow and the all, his courage before his judges, his forgiveness extended even to his executioners, and the victory with which you rewarded him when you raised him from death on the third day. We pray now for the gift of your spirit to empower us in the celebration of the sacrament of his presence, then, now, and at his return in glory. Let this common bread and the fruit of the lowly vine become for us reminders of his broken body and spilled blood. If we were asked, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Let us have the integrity to answer, yes, we were and we were of no more use or help than the disciples. So let us approach this table that we may experience his mercy and his deathless love. We pray in his gracious name, even as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
as the ushers come forward, we'll continue our worship as we dedicate ourselves in the giving of our tithes and offerings. Let us pray. With grateful hearts, we bring these our gifts, Lord, and we pray that you would use them and us to be a blessing to others. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
seated. David wanted to build the temple, but was not allowed. His son Solomon was the one that completed the temple in Jerusalem. A great sacrifice was held, a great service consecrating the temple. And after all the ceremony, the Lord appeared to Solomon. And here's what God said, Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, verses 12 through 15. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence upon my people, if my people, who are called by my name, humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. May, no, I better do the right one. Friends, this is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Tomorrow morning, a podcast will be released on our website. It's um, Lindsay Hurd and Tila Lee and, and Kyle talking about prayer and how prayer influences our lives and changes our lives. And I want you to watch just a little bit of a clip from that. Lindsay Hurd talking about being submissive and being humble to what God wants us to do. I remember in Bible study, um, and, and several people had, had been quoting, you know, Romans 8, 28, God works for the good of, of those who, who love Him according to His will. And I began to not like that verse, like a lot. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I, I did not like it. And when somebody said it, I think I might've rolled my eyes. And I was mm -hmm. deeply convicted that Okay, if I'm a follower of Jesus, then this whole book, do I believe it? And do I really believe that, yes, even His goodness is for me? Mm -hmm. And so I began to pray for, for God to open my eyes to that mm -hmm. because I was still wrestling with this prayer that was answered how I did not think it should be answered. Mm -hmm. And He began to just in a very sweet way teach me like, just trust that I, I am going to be with you no matter what, mm -hmm. and that anything that draws you closer to me is my goodness. And so I began, and even when I still struggle with that, with fear of that, I go back and I, I, I try to get back in that place of complete submission and surrender. You talked about submission mm -hmm. earlier, you know. Um, that is humbling yourself. That is saying, I'm giving it all to you. And I'm not just trusting that you have a plan for me. I'm trusting that it is good and yeah. that I am going to be drawn closer to you. And that, that's what our purpose here, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is to draw closer and closer to him. And so the journey that I've taken, that he has taken me on with him is far better than any Thing I could plan. Mm -hmm. And so just to, even when prayers seem unanswered or not the way you planned, trust in His goodness. The, the goodness of God, that song is has such a special place in mm -hmm. my heart because I truly, He has shown me my purpose is to know Him and to praise Him. And so with every breath that I have, mm -hmm. I'm going to praise of His goodness. You can watch the full podcast tomorrow when we release it. The temple pleased God. He was happy that the task was completed. He promised to be present at the temple. He promised to hear the prayers poured out at the temple, but he warned his people, as he always did, that you're going to turn your backs on me and the normal and natural consequences of walking away from me 
or ignoring me will come to your land. We think how quaint. Yet as we read our newspapers and we watch our news broadcasts, we wonder, what in the world is going on? Well, it's called human sinfulness. That's what's going on. The psalmist in the 94th Psalm put it this way, they pour out their arrogant words, all the evildoers boast. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They kill the widow and the stranger. They murder the orphan. And they say, the Lord does not see. The God of Jacob does not perceive. Understand, O dullest of people, fools, when will you be wise? He who planted the ear, does he not hear? He who formed the eye, does he not see? He who disciplines the nations, he who teaches knowledge to humankind, does he not chastise? The Lord knows our thoughts, that they are but empty breath. And if you want the New Testament version of that, it's the Apostle Paul writing to Timothy, and he said, you must understand this, that in the last days distressing times will come, for people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, inhumane, implacable, slanderers, profligates, brutes, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the outward form of godliness, but denying its power. Paul says to Timothy, avoid them. He said, because the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires. They will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. Sounds familiar. C.S. Lewis, in reflecting on his journey uh, coming to faith in Christ, was looking back at a time in his life, and he wrote about his own life. He, I found, he writes, what appalled me a zoo of lusts, a bedlam of ambition, a nursery of fears, a harem of fondled hatreds. My name was Legion. God says the problem with humanity is, was, and will be sinfulness. It is a problem that has estranged people from God's love. It is a problem that human beings in and of themselves are not able to deal with or to reconcile. So God tells Solomon when human sinfulness raises its head and when the results of sinfulness are seen all about, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. It all starts with a humble heart, a submissive heart, an obedient heart. And in those four activities, God gave Solomon a formula that can bring healing and wholeness to our nation, that can bring healing and wholeness to our lives, that can bring healing and wholeness to our church. Humble ourselves, pray, seek the face of God, and turn Turn from your wicked ways. We start a four-week series on prayer, and prayer is simply defined as talking to God who listens and responds because He loves us. And what I hope we accomplish in this month of sermons of prayer and all the other activities we have around prayer is that you move from prayer being a duty to prayer being a delight. In the church of my baptism, every Sunday we filled out the little cards. 
You put your offering, your quarter in the little cards, and you, you did the checklist. Prayed daily, read my Bible daily, talked to somebody about Jesus daily, did all these things. And I want you to know that in that church, we learned very early not to tell the truth. Prayed daily. Boy, I checked that one off. Sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. But in my life now, I can say, yes, I pray many times daily. It's not a duty. I just want to spend time with God. I need to spend time with God. And I hope that you'll learn in your life to, to move that from duty to delight. We're going to help you remember it every day. I want you to set two alarms on your phone because I know that's where you keep your alarm clock now. I want you to set two alarms at 7.14 a.m. and 7.14 p.m. Second Chronicles 7.14, you get it? At 7.14 a.m. and 7.14 p.m., I want you to stop and pray. You can just call a prayer timeout if you're in the middle of something. Let that alarm go off for everybody to hear. And if somebody asks, what are you doing? Say, I'm going to stop and pray. And the other hint I'm going to give you that I do as part of my devotional time is I've been praying through the book of Psalms. You know, sometimes you just seem to run out of something to say to God or you find yourself saying the same thing over and over and over and over again. If you'll start with the Psalter and you can pray them like this, Dear Lord, and just read a psalm out loud. And you get to the end of it and you say, In Jesus' name, I declare to you that's a prayer. And you will find some of those prayers poignant, some of those prayers heart-rending, and some of those prayers heart-changing. So I want you to become a praying people because that word if looms very large in this text. If, if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked, wicked ways. Then we've got to get the if part of it done. We've got to get that praying done. And prayer transforms us. We can't pray, and, and I've heard Second Chronicles seven fourteen done like this. God, I'm just praying for all those pagans. Get them, God. That's not how it works. The prayer changes us. The prayer changes our heart and our perspective. The, the praying changes our behavior. We become participants then with Jesus Christ in the transformation of his world. How do we do that? By becoming more Christ-like, by developing humble, submissive, obedient hearts. What was it Jesus said? If you love me, obey me. And prayer aligns us with God. And when we discover this rich delight of prayer, we discover a power and a relationship and a presence we've never known. It moves from duty to delight. Well, in the church of my baptism, they did believe that if they could keep you going to church, they could keep you from sinning. So I learned to sin at church. And I'm telling you that we were there Sunday morning. We were there Sunday night. We were there Wednesday night. We went Tuesday night visitation with the deacons. We were just there all the time. But Sunday night we loved because don't tell Mickey. I sang in the youth choir. Then we would go to youth training union. Then we'd go to Sunday night church. And then we would gather at the sacred pizza hut for our pizza afterwards. And that's where the youth group ended Sunday night at Pizza Hut. And I've been asking God's forgiveness that those waiters and waitresses at Pizza Hut would forgive all those teenagers who just didn't know what we were putting them through. But one Sunday night, we were all sitting in the Pizza Hut 
eating a pizza, and we were, we were kind of wondering where Steve and Shannon had been. Steve and Shannon were a little bit, they were a year older than we were, and they were kind of de facto leaders of the youth group, and everybody loved Steve and Shannon, and we knew that Steve and Shannon loved each other. And we wondered, where'd they go? They weren't in youth choir, weren't in training union, they weren't in church. Steve had a 1973 yellow Volkswagen Beetle. As we sat there at the Pizza Hut on Highway 31, we watched a wrecker towing a 1973 yellow Volkswagen Beetle. And I don't know if any of you have ever been around a Volkswagen, but the only thing in the hood is 10 gallons of gasoline, engines in the back. This Volkswagen was crushed. Crushed. We knew whose Volkswagen it was. So my father, who was a business manager at one of the hospitals in Decatur, I got on the phone with Dad, and I said, Dad, I'm looking for Steve and Shannon. Did the ambulance bring them? And Dad said, yes, the ambulance brought them. Steve just kind of bruised and battered. But Shannon was thrown out of the vehicle. And she hit her head. And they've taken her to Huntsville Hospital, and that was never good when somebody went to Huntsville Hospital. They don't think she's going to live. We were still in the Pizza Hut when I made that call. And the youth group didn't know how to break into the church, but we knew we needed to pray. So we had Pizza Hut prayer for Shannon. And this girl who wasn't supposed to live through the night made it to the next morning. But we found out that Shannon would probably never wake up that she would just be in this persistive, vegetative state for the rest of her life. And the youth group, who didn't know a whole lot about formal prayer or doing anything else church-wise, got together and we prayed for Shannon again. And she woke up. And then they said Shannon would never walk. And then they said Shannon would never do this. And then they said Shannon and Shannon and Shannon. And every time we heard the news about Shannon, we called out to God in prayer. Facebook is a marvelous tool. I stalked Shannon this week. Shannon and Steve had run off and gotten married. They hadn't told anybody, but that's where they were. They were running off and getting married. Steve and Shannon had a couple of kids. Steve and Shannon have been married now nearly 50 years, and Steve and Shannon not only are parents, but they are grandparents. And the only thing you can tell about Shannon is when she smiles, it's just a little bit crooked. But in a great tragedy, in a time where a bunch of teenagers didn't know what to do, we called out to God and we prayed. And y'all, our prayers weren't formal. They probably were not properly formed, but they came from a humble heart, a heart that believed that God could and God would. And I encourage you, whatever you're facing, whatever you're facing with someone, 
pray. This morning as we come to the altar to receive the sacrament of communion, you may just leave a little note on the altar that you want prayers for someone. And and what's going to happen after this service is any prayer requests that are left in here. Uh, We've got a group down in Rainwater Chapel that are going to be praying for you right after this worship service. So if it's on your heart, if you have a need, then pray. There it is. If, if, then pray. So I invite you this morning to come to this joyous celebration of Holy Communion. But I invite you to come with submissive hearts, with humble hearts, remembering that at this place, God is present that Christ's heart beats with our heart, and he's as close as a prayer. Amen. Would you join me now for the great thanksgiving? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, our Alpha and Omega, whose strong and loving arms encompass the universe. For with your eternal word and Holy Spirit, you are forever one God. Through your word, you created all things and called them good. And in you, we live and move and have our being. When we fell into sin, you did not desert us. You made covenant with your people Israel and spoke through your prophets and teachers. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And so with your people on earth and with all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ who called you Abba father as a mother tenderly gathers her children you embraced a people as your own and filled them with a longing for peace that would last and for justice that would never fail in Jesus' suffering and death you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever You raised from the dead this same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory, and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this wine we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world redeemed by his blood. 
as the grain and grapes once dispersed in the fields are now united on this table in bread and wine. So may we and all your people be gathered from every time and place into the unity of your eternal household and feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 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 This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. If you're helping with communion this morning, would you come forward? Other, there we go. Communion helpers. As they're doing that, I remind you that this is the Lord's table, that you are all invited. You are all welcomed here to receive this sacrament. We serve communion by intention, by taking a piece of the bread and dipping it in the chalice. Uh, again, I invite you to the altar that if you'd like to spend a time praying, please do so. And also, if you have prayer concerns you would like to leave here, there are those who will be praying for you in the, after this service. The table of the Lord is prepared. We will serve the choir first, and then the altars will assist you as you come.
us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy history in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Christ our Lord, amen. Would you stand as we sing our closing hymn? You've been watching the live broadcast from Trinity United Methodist Church in Ruston, Louisiana. I'm Reverend Doug DeGraffenry, and I want to thank you for choosing to be a part of our worshiping community today. Our prayer is that God has used this time to speak specifically to you, wherever you are on your faith journey. At Trinity, our goal is to help you live into a deeper relationship with Jesus and reach wider in serving the world He loves. For more information about how you can live deeper and reach wider, visit us online at trinityruston.org and let us know how we can help you reach the next step of your walk with Christ. Thanks again for watching, and we look forward to seeing you soon.